For years, email has been a tried and true way to get your brand in front of your customer, client, or patient. But more and more, it's much more difficult to get email in front of people. Today, we use strategies that combine email, social media, and text messaging to successfully get your brand in front of your prospective customer, client, or patient. In this video, I'm going to take you through the structure of something called the autoresponder. It's an automated series of emails and messages that go out that are designed to perpetuate your brand in front of your ideal prospect. So stay tuned for that. First, what is an autoresponder? An autoresponder is a predefined series of messages intended to go to a recipient. And those messages are typically sent through email and text messaging, sometimes augmented with targeted ads using retargeting. In today's video, I'm going to talk more about email and text as a execution or delivery method for your autoresponder. The autoresponder has a structure that is designed to do one really important thing. It's designed to measure engagement. And that measurement of engagement is also intended to help perpetuate your brand as an authority and over time to build trust. The way you measure engagement in email and text is through click behavior. So when you're crafting an autoresponder, it's really important that you've designed it in such a way that that person, when they've received it within a second or two, knows if they're interested enough to click. As I walk you through the autoresponder, you will see that we're going to be really careful about making sure that at the top of each one of our messages, there's a place to click. That click tells us, it tells us what interests that recipient. If there are two or three places to click and they click in one place, we know that interests them enough to move on to the next step. That click not only measures engagement, but it also does another thing. It creates a micro commitment from that recipient. The act of clicking is a micro commitment that they make that usually gets them to read at least a little bit of the message when they land where you want them to go. Another thing the autoresponder does is since it happens over time, imagine a series of five to seven messages over time. Maybe it's once every couple of days, maybe it's once every couple of weeks or some sort of mix like that. Those messages, as they arrive over time, they do two really important things. One, they are kind of like a billboard on a highway. You're driving down the road, you pass a billboard, sometimes you notice it, sometimes you don't. But each time you do notice it, it perpetuates that brand in your mind. It establishes that brand. And over time, your brand builds. Much like a billboard, an autoresponder with an email or text arriving at a scheduled interval gets your brand in front of that person. They might not open, open it every time. They may not even notice it every time, but when they do, they see your brand. That's one important aspect of it. The second important aspect of that autoresponder, well, it builds trust. What do I mean by trust? What, it, what I mean by that is, when someone consistently provides you something of value or just consistently does something, over time that establishes a trust relationship. And if you message somebody consistently in a way that's not intrusive but helpful, and you do that over a period of time, eventually, subconsciously, they're going to trust your brand more. And it's a great way to build that trust. Now the structure of the autoresponder, I mentioned five to seven messages, works like this. The first part is the, let's call it the about. It says a little bit about your company. It reminds that person why they're receiving it and it tells them what's coming next. You, you set up like a cliffhanger. You want them to be curious enough to open your next message. That second message typically coming the next day. The next part, the second component of an autoresponder, those are the topic messages or the content messages. And depending on the purpose of the autoresponder, those are used to either segment the recipients or to reinforce your brand with the recipients. By segmenting, what I mean is messages two, three, and four will be on a different topic related to your brand. 
And based on the person's click behavior, it tells us which one of those components or which one of those products or services or which area of your authority associated with your brand interests that person. The segmenting happens through their own behavior, through their own click behavior. If the autoresponder is not used to segment, but it's used to reinforce your brand, then each one of those emails, messages two, three, four, each one of those messages covers something important, useful, helpful to that recipient, but consistent with the message you're trying to convey or the product or service you're going to offer them. The third part of an autoresponder, well, that's the offer. That's what you want somebody to do. If you want somebody to buy something, you offer it in the third component. If you want somebody just to pick up the phone and call and ask questions, that's where you do it. If you want them to click to a landing page, if you want them to opt in for additional emails, if you want them to ask more of you, that's what goes in that third section, usually the fifth, sixth, or seventh email or message in a series. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a piece of software to show you what an autoresponder should look like. So watch through this. Now this is applicable to any marketing automation software. Whether you're using Salesforce or HubSpot, you're using Marketo, or you're using Infusionsoft, there are so many really good packages out there. Each one does marketing automation a different way, but the concepts are the same. In this video, I'm going to use a tool called Infusionsoft to show you how to set up your autoresponder. When I create the autoresponder, there's usually some entry point. That entry point is typically an action that the person receiving it has taken. They may have opted in on the website. That person may have been to an event of yours. No matter how they got into the list, the autoresponder is the first thing they receive. It's the first interaction with your brand. That's what kicks off the first email. That's called the about email. When I look at an about email, it's actually fairly simple. The about email is more of a welcome. It's a acknowledgement of that person in your community. It might be acknowledging that they've opted in or subscribed or had an inquiry, but it's intended to familiarize them with your brand. And in that email, you point out or acknowledge the purpose of your brand, what it is that you expect for them to get out of it. Then what you do is you tee them up to receive something else. And the idea here is that you are enticing them, giving a little bit of suspense, letting them know something's coming up next. The sole purpose for that? Well, the sole purpose is to get them to read the next email. That's all we want at this point. Simple introduction and get them to read that next email. Within that message, you're also going to give them some instructions. Sometimes when we do these, we do them in a way that shares how to make you a safe sender. You really don't want to end up in the spam folder, so you often have to give instructions to the recipient on how to make you a safe sender. The way we like to do it is to have a link to a page on the website. Why do we do this? Because it's all about engagement. When somebody opens an email and they click, we know they've engaged with some aspect of that email. And when they've clicked, we also know that we could continue to contact them because they're showing some form of interest. And the third reason is when, we, when they click, we can take them to a place that further showcases our brand. And that's how email one is intended to work. It's the about email, it tees up what's coming next, and in some cases, it teaches them how to make you a safe sender. Let's look at the emails that are topical emails and how they're structured. One of the things I mentioned before is the topic emails are intended to be used to segment when you're indoctrinating somebody to your brand for the first time. Each email is on a different type of service you offer or a different area of interest to that prospect so that based on their click behavior, we know what interests them. In the series you see below, there are different emails based on different aspects of digital marketing. We have one on blogging, social media, SEO, and CRMs. 
And we feel that when we send those emails out, based on click behavior, somebody is going to show us that they're interested in, in those areas. Now the messaging in this autoresponder is really about increasing sales. That's the message this series is intended to get across. And each one of those emails will support increasing sales in some way. In the blogging email, we're still supporting that, but we're taking them down a path to learn how to learn, use blogging as an effective tool. And then we have a link in it that they can follow. And if they're engaged or interested in blogging, they'll click on it and they'll learn more. As you see, these emails are not long. They really should not be long. They should get to the point quickly, have a few places to click, and get that person out of email and to your website. Now we mentioned a segmenting autoresponder where we have different topics to get an idea of what interests that person. But there are also autoresponders that are intended to perpetuate a brand or intended to simply perpetuate your authority. During COVID-19 era, messaging has evolved to where we're doing more brand and authority support autoresponders rather than segmenting autoresponders. Segmenting is for new people interested in your brand. The autoresponders that perpetuate your brand and its authority are less around segmenting and more about, about giving something useful and valuable to that recipient over time on a similar topic. For example, this is a series on marketing best practices. And what it does is over time, it sends a message that is a short summary of a blog post. And then it has a link to that post. The whole point of it is to, over time, continue to share something of value and engage that person, but do it really quickly. I'll show you an example. In this message, it's about marketing today in a challenging time. Is it the same or different? And in the email, it gets to the point really quickly and has a link. It also has a, an, a call to action with a phone number to call. And we'll talk a little bit more about calls to action and phone numbers in a minute. But for now, notice that this email is uh, much more straightforward, much more to the point. We're going to send several of these. In fact, we'll probably send about 14 to 16 of these messages over a long period of time. And why do we do this? We're doing this to reinforce our brand and our authority in front of the recipient. And each time we're sharing something we know would we find valuable to that recipient. This leads us to the next part of an autoresponder and each of those emails. The subject line is the most critical element. Why is that? A subject line serves one purpose. A subject line is intended to get the person to open the email. That's it. You're not selling in the subject line. You're not putting your call to action in the subject line. You're not doing any filler in the subject line. You want them to open the email. Now, some marketers get a little bit lazy and they do subject lines that are deceptive in a way that piques curiosity to get somebody to open the email. And while you might think, oh great, I do a, a deceptive subject line, they open the email, I'm getting more opens. But trickery doesn't work. All it does is inflate your open rate. You want the subject line to be interesting enough to the recipient that it piques their interest and they will open it, not tricking them into open it. For example, you see something along the lines of, guess what he just did? Well, that's clickbait, and that doesn't do you, your brand any good. But th be thoughtful about your subject line. Make sure your subject line is something that is engaging enough that if your prospect, or your recipient in this case, is truly interested in what you have to say, they're going to open that. The second thing to consider today is the secondary subject line. In many systems, that's called preview text. The preview text is the text you see when you're reviewing the email in a email program like Outlook or on your cell phone. When you're looking at your emails in a summary, you'll see the subject line, but then below it, you'll see the preview text. If you don't include preview text, it just defaults to the first line in the email. Preview text gives you a lot more control over your email so that you can use the preview text as kind of a, a component to complement that subject line. The next element to discuss on the email 
Well, that is the call to action. So we've done the about. That's where we're teeing things up. We've done the content or the topic emails. Then the last email in the series, typically email five, six, or seven. That's the call to action. That's what you want the person to do. What is it that you want them to do when they get these? Well, maybe you want them to buy something, but more often you want them to call or schedule a consultation or go to a specific spot on a website and take some action. If it's to call and take some action like a consultation, you want to tee that up right in that last email. Don't be afraid to ask for that in the final email of the autoresponder series. After all, you've shared really useful content for the last several weeks. And if they've been opening and engaging with that, they're going to expect you to make some sort of offer. Now we do those in a couple of different ways. You might click a link and go to a form. Uh, the other way is that you use a phone number. When we put phone numbers in emails, we tend to use call tracking numbers. That is, instead of putting in the email the main phone number, we are going to have a call tracking number that forwards to the main phone number. This way, whenever somebody calls that number, we know that that's a conversion from the email campaign that we're running. And when we use those call tracking numbers, we get the added benefit of being able to record that. So we get an idea of the number of calls that have come in from an email series or from an autoresponder, and we get a good feel for the type of people that are making those calls. And that helps us better align our messaging with the type of caller that's coming in and reacting to that offer we made. Putting us all together, the autoresponder is an amazing tool. It starts with the about, it, in the middle part are the topic emails, and it ends with a call to action. And this can be done through email, through texting, or through a blend of the two. For example, we may choose to do email one through traditional email marketing automation. But at the same time, simultaneously, we might send them a text with just a subset of what we sent in that first email, thereby teeing that person up or getting that person ready for message number two. The first text might say, hey, I'm gonna send you an email tomorrow, take a look, for, take a look out for it on this topic. I think you might find it interesting. And then back and forth, you can alternate texts and emails or have texts follow up. Hey, I just sent you an email. I think you might find it helpful in your business today. And you put those things together and orchestrate them in your marketing automation system. If you don't have marketing automation, this is a good time to look for the tools available. There are many great tools on the market. If you're curious about some of the tools that we've used, put a comment below, ask a question. Or if you're already using a marketing automation system, add that comment as well. I'd love to hear what you're using. It will help us get a better idea of how to craft videos specific to your tool set. As always, if you like what you heard today, I would appreciate a like. I would also appreciate it if you subscribe. After all, we're going to continually create more content like this that hopefully is valuable to you. Hopefully this was helpful. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.